Welcome to Who Are You? The Bobcats You Know, The Stories You Don't. I'm your host, Joel Vanner, inside the podcast studio at Quinnipiac University. And joining me today for episode five is Yousef Usman. Yousef, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I'm sure you can guess uh, by the title of the podcast what my first question to you is going to be. And that question is, who are you? Uh, I am Yusuf. I'm originally from Nigeria, and then I'm a graduate research assistant here at Quinnipiac University, working on the Department of Cybersecurity. And you're in the cybersecurity program graduating this year. Um, tell me a little bit about how Quinnipiac uh, came to be for you and, and what the story is there. I hear it's a quite an interesting one. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, Quinnipiac, my Quinnipiac journey is really funny because when I was searching for the school, looking for where to go, to come to the U.S. for my uh, master's degree in cybersecurity, actually, Quinnipiac was not even in my list. So it's just funny how I know about Quinnipiac, how I met uh, Sarah Gardner, who is an international student at the mission office. Mm-hmm. When Quinnipiac, she was in Nigeria for the... Uh, I think education event because a U.S. embassy, they have like a program called Education USA. So they call all the school from the U.S. to attend various countries where they can meet students. So I was actually uh, done with work, going home, and then I saw the crowd going on. I was like, ah, it's a natural branch here. So I went in there, and then I saw the event was going on. Uh, I... I attend to a couple universities and then I was my way out. I think I even left the venue. Then I saw the Quinnipiac logo. I was like, yeah, this is interesting. So I went back in. I wanted to talk to her. Then I was no, no need. So I left and then I went back in again. I talked to her. Do you guys have a cybersecurity major? This is what I'm interested in. She was like, no, we have computer science. I'm like, nope, I'm interested in cybersecurity. So she was like, ah, oh, we don't have it now, but I think we'll let you know when we have one. So I walk out, then I went back in again. I was like, yeah, can we take a picture? So she was like, sure. She went the Knipiak logo, and then we take a picture. And a year later, she sent me an email. Hey, Yusuf, are you interested in Sabahiski? We're going to start uh, on campus this, uh, this fall. I was like, yeah, sure. So she was like, okay, you're the first person I reach out to. So let me know when you apply. So I submit my application, and then I think I'm the first person to get admissions. So we are the first people on campus as a cybersecurity major at Quinnipiac Graduate wow. School. That's an awesome story. Yeah. The fact that you went back and, and connected with Sarah and got the picture, which uh, you said you have, and and we'll have to see that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an awesome story. Yeah, because it's like, uh, I don't know, I left and then something was like, just it's a, I think it meant to be. So yeah. um, here I am. <laughs> yep. What has, what sparked your interest in cybersecurity? What, what you mentioned you were coming from work. Um, what? Where did you work before you started? So uh, I was working in Nigeria National Assembly where I work with the Senate and the congressmen in Nigeria. I was in the IT department. So uh, we're having a lot of, uh, you know, Nigeria is a little too big. Uh, We have a lot of populations. And then we're at number seven in the internet users in the world. So we're pressing a lot of like uh, cyber crime activities and also uh, most especially email, email security. So I saw a podcast, I think a YouTube video on Fred's show about email security, actually. Uh, so one of the reasons I like to, I like cyber security and venture myself because people trust uh, people they are doing business with and uh, our area, were, but, sorry. But at the same time, the issues is raising as really becoming critical. So that's what I changed. I was like, I think I need to get into cyber security where we can help people with the security and order uh, to make internet secure and better place for everyone. And what about studying cyber security in the U.S. at Quinnipiac? What drew you uh, to doing that? So it's this interesting one because when the U.S. idea, sorry, the Quinnipiac was not in my list. Mm-hmm. And then when uh, I talked to Sarah Gardner, we go through then. When she sent me the link, I go through the professors who are teaching us like one thing interested me that all of them are actually from the industry background. So I was like, wow, this is going to be interesting because there's a big gap between academic and industry. So when you see a course or a major that is majority of the people who are taking te- teaching those courses are actually from the industry. Mm-hmm. That's me show you that you're gonna learn something. 
So Fresh Show and other professors, they are open. We have professors open FBI and different backgrounds. Like, okay, this is where I want to go. So I think that is one of the reasons I choose Cunefi. Yeah, and that's really cool, right? Having yeah. professors who are in the field or who have field experience and are coming back to teach, um, getting to have those connections. That's really great. We'll get into research and all of that in just yeah. a minute. Um, so going back, you applied to the program, the first one admitted, the on-campus cybersecurity program. Yes. Arriving to Quinnipiac, yeah. tell me a little bit about what that experience was like. Uh, I think I would say shout out to international student office. It's just like, it's just like you coming back home because they always have so much organized committee. They call it a global partner, which I'm part of now. Because when I arrived at Cunipia, no, even JFK, I was like, of course, Sarah Drisco, hey, I'm here. She was like, okay, yeah, we get, uh, what do you call it? Go taxi or something to mm-hmm. pick you at the airport. So do I have to pay for this? Said, no. The school paper, yes, like, whoa. <laughs> so it was interesting. It got me here. And then there's a lot of student, international students at Loka who are here to welcome us. They go to our campuses, our dorm, and where we're supposed to live. They even have some welcome package, some snacks and something. You tire, go and get some rest. People carry your bag, take you to where you're supposed to be. So it's really like you coming back home, your cousins are there to welcome you. Yeah, so it's I, really interesting. I bet that helps with the stress, right? Yeah. Uh, c- coming all the way here and having a, a, a group to welcome you and get you into the right place. Um, that's awesome that you had that that experience. Yeah, it was amazing because imagine having like uh, 18 to 20 hours flight, you get here and then you have people to carry your back and get you where you're supposed to be. This is like really a good uh, experience, honestly. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier your research. Um, tell me a little bit about your research experiences how you got started in research, um, and then we can go into um, the research that you're doing uh, yourself now. So when I got here, they said, hey, you're, going, you're one of our postgraduate assistants. We, we actually don't have any graduate assistants. You guys are going to be the first one to open the way if we're going to continue this program or not. So you'll be working with the professor in the security research, cybersecurity research, and also you'll be working with Fresh Show as an admin assistant. So it's like, okay, I actually didn't have much uh, idea or experience about this side. So glad the professor actually is very good one. He actually teach me and show me how to carry out research. So we did a quite wonderful research before he left. He moved to uh, somewhere else, and then I continued doing research on myself. With the, later on, with the help of uh, the dean of the School of Computer Science, Taskia. Mm-hmm. So who is the one actually... Now, supervising us, I'm leading the research group. We have a whole research team. I started alone, now we have a whole research team. So at least we're going somewhere. Wow, it's a lot of, a lot of firsts for you. That's awesome that you've established a, a whole team there. What kinds of research did you work on uh, with the cybersecurity professor when you first got started? Uh, so first, when we first started, we started, uh, he said, like, if you have any topic that you want to work on, we can work on it. But if you don't have any, I can give you some words. Like, so I gave him like a list of topic that I want to. One of them is, uh, can AI help you when we do carry out research on how to use AI in protecting your data, to mm-hmm. email security and other activities. So which was actually a very quite popular paper now on the internet. And then we got a lot of uh, citation on that and people are reaching out to like hey how did you do this whatever and then uh, when we present the paper actually been one of the best paper during that time as well wow that's awesome yeah and now fast forwarding um, you're doing your own research you're getting support from the dean of the school of computing and engineering um, tell me a little bit about the research that you're doing now um, and where that's connected Okay, so still I my research focus actually on the AI and machine learning in cybersecurity. So still I'm focusing on that. And now we also, the group we are working with, uh, we have various research topics. Some are working on the uh, earthquake prediction, some are working on the content competing, and then some are working on AI in security as well. So I think that is where we're heading to. We're trying to see if we can make a Quinnipiac Research Institute because most specialists group of engineering and computer science, we don't have any research or research team. So this is the first research team. Mm-hmm. And also we hopefully to make a Quinnipiac Research Institute like other schools around the country. 
So talking about your research, you mentioned it was on AI, which is a pretty big topic today. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you found in that research and what it was about. So actually what we did in that research, uh, that's, you can see from the name of the, the title of the paper, Can AI Help You? It means like, uh, can actually can AI actually help you when you think of it? Like you use AI in day-to-day -day activities almost every day in our life, other people use AI. But when you search or you put your information, where is that data going? Who is going to get access to that data? Is the AI saving the data? If it's saving it for who and who is going to... Uh, take a look at that. It can be in the hand of a bad guy or a good guy or any person. Because if you see one of the simple things you do, if you write a text message or you ask ChatGPT something, and then you give your answer, if you say, no, do better, you know, it's, you don't have to write the question again, right? It's to just do a better thing. That is when you already have uh, the memory of what you asked first. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do something better or change it. All you need to say, add this to this text or remove this. It will just remove it. So that means the first question you ask, the chat GPT or any AI tools you use, you already save that. So is that safe? You can put your resume detail, you can put your database, social, whatever people put every kind of thing there. So in day-to-day -day activities. So that is a really a concern, something concerned like that people should be concerned about. Uh, AI is a good thing. People use it, it help people. But at the same time, it's kind of like a little bit scary because at the end of the day, we're going to come back and try to fix it, try to fight AI if it is not taken. Uh, and then for me, I always say like AI is as dangerous as a global warming. Uh, I think people should be careful what they use AI for. But I always encourage people to use AI because my research all is focused on AI and insecurity. Absolutely. Give it yeah. only what it needs and nothing more. And, yeah, nothing and more. Once it has that, <laughs> you can't pull it out, right? Yep. Because it's, yeah, it's definitely. It's the model there. Yeah. Wow, that's really awesome research. Speaking of connections to your research, uh, you have a connection to NASA with your research. Uh, tell me a little bit about that connection there and, and what that research has been about. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we actually, when the former professor left, okay, before he left, we write a proposal, we submit a grant to NASA requesting for our to do research in 5G and 6G and beyond uh, wireless communications. And then we got approval, I think it's 20 or 40 grand, I can't remember exactly the amount of the money we got for NASA to carry out those research. So those research is also about, uh, uh, so the, I would say, uh, network security. So it's all our research focus on network security, which is we carry out to reduce the network trafficking and then security issue of the network, which we have like almost, I would say, 50 percent, I saw the 95 percent uh, accuracy with the result we carry out. And then we got an award on that during the NASA postdoc presentations at uh, New England Air Museum. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. So you presented your research. Uh, at the New England Air Museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're presenting our research poster, and then we submit. I think we're able to also produce two research papers from that research. We have produced a poster. We presented at uh, New England Air Museum with the team, which are the two undergrad students and computer science major. Wow, that's awesome. And you're yeah. mentioning team and the the research team that you've helped establish, right? Um, um in the area of cybersecurity. Um, I'm sure throughout all of these research research experiences, you've you've accumulated quite a network um, uh, around you. Tell me a little bit about the network and, and just being able to meet others um, and how that's impacted you. Yeah, uh, so actually I was able to meet a couple, a lot of people from, when I came here, I don't know nobody actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd also, uh, I was able to meet a lot of people from RISA, most especially anytime I went out to do presentation, to present, to attend conference, to present our work. People would be like quite interested in that. So they reach out. So I met a lot of people from various school, like from industries, from IBM, Google, and Yukon, and all the schools around. And then now recently I've been appointed as one of the IEEE E, e not coordinator for Kinetic A. Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, like, it's part of the thing that I still I did because I don't even know what IEEE is all about before I get here, but now I'm in the state level. So, this is a, quite a journey on research industry. And then I'm working on bringing the IEEE branch here at Cunifia because we don't have any IEEE branch. And we have an awesome uh, engineering majors here. So, 
And what does IEEE stand for? Uh, Institute of Electrical Electronic Engineering. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds like an awesome experience. Yeah, it was great. That's that great. that in your research um, and the academics, how have these experiences helped you grow? Uh, so actually, this has really helped me grow in quite a number of ways because uh, me coming from the industry, I don't know that the academic and the industry, there's a really quite a big gap between. For me getting here, I understand there's a big gap, which is what we are working I think in reducing the gap now. Uh, recently, we, I submitted a proposal, so just seem to create like a, a cyber security hands-on experience where we give students experience to carry out an internship or other uh, activity to cover the gap because... Uh, in our major cyber security, uh, people don't trust you when you don't have work experience. Right. And when students finish, they are like, we need experience. Do you have experience? I'm like, no, I just finished school. So no, you need experience to get a job. So we're trying to work on that. That actually changed me because before I was like, oh, it's all normal, but it's totally different. So I think that will help a lot. Yep. Your program coming to an end, graduating this year in a couple months. Yeah. Um, moving forward, um, what uh, does your career look like and, and what are you hoping to achieve once you leave Quinnipiac? So what my career will look like when I leave Quinnipiac, I'm looking forward to to have more work on S1, uh, hands-on experience. I'm looking forward to work with the industry where I can get more experience. And then hopefully, maybe I'm not sure if I, maybe I'm thinking to also to for to go for PhD because like now before I'm not interested in RISA, but now I'm actually interested in RISA because I learn solving problems, I learn trying new things. So and then when I get a couple of experience, I'm hopefully going back to my home country Nigeria to establish something because like with the growing population, with the growing cyber crime and other things that we need cyber security as well. So I'm hoping to go back and establish a good cybersecurity industry that will be that will have a uh, skill industry as well. That's awesome, and yeah. promoting internet literacy and and all those other things. That's, yeah. that's really awesome. Yes, yes, that would be that would be that that is the goal actually. So I think yeah, that's quite the journey. The, trying to get experience because here actually is uh, have the highest the company, the technology, all in the U.S., whatever you want to get here. If you can establish a work experience, learn a lot here, you can almost work anywhere in the world. Well, Youssef, that's all the time we have together today. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. If you like today's episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and find other episodes of Who Are You on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube Podcasts, or wherever else you get your favorite podcasts. I hope you enjoyed getting to know Youssef with me today. And until next time, see you later.